So that fuel gauge is uh, a visual cue to have you tune into your energy and to assess whether or not you are depleted and empty about something and heavy or the other um, extreme is energized, full, um, expanded, uh, open to possibility. And the reason why I ask you to do that first thing in the morning to assess your mood, to assess your energy, to tune in is because there's established research that says that your mood in your morning impacts your productivity and focus all day long. And so if you can boost your mood in the morning, it has a material impact on your focus and on your uh, productivity all day. And so we use it in the morning in the journaling method that I've taught you in videos nine through 11. But when it comes to, deci to decisions, I want you to do the exact same thing. I get that you're scared, it's a change. I would be kind of surprised if you weren't a little nervous about doing something awesome, like moving to a new state and uh, starting a, a new job and all the possibilities that come in with it. So if you're trying to make a decision, do I do this thing that's scary or not? What you do is tune inward and really assess how do you feel about it? When you think about yourself living in this new place and having this new job and all the possibility and growth that comes with it, do you feel dead and depleted and stuck? Or do you feel energized and alive and full of possibility. You see, if the decision is something that will expand your future, that will create possibility, that will make you um, grow, then it is a thousand percent something that you must do. And you must do it even though you're afraid. And the fear is a very normal thing. And the fear is there because you're about to do something new, but do not use the fear to talk yourself out of making a decision that actually is grounded in growth and possibility and energizing you. So that's how I make decisions using the stuff that you're learning in the mindset reset. And again, you can go back to the journaling method on videos nine, 10 and 11. But if you have a big decision to make and you notice that you're afraid or you notice that you're stuck up here, go in. Go in and ask yourself, does the decision deplete me, make me stuck, make me feel dead, make me feel heavy? Or does the decision, even though it scares me, even though it's hard, is there something about it that expands possibility and opens up my life and, and will give me an opportunity to grow? If you're in this camp, the answer is heck yes. If you're in the dead camp and the ugh, hell no, heck no, okay? All right, cool. Um, let me give you a shout out real quick. Because the do it anyway thing, I do it every morning. Because here's the deal about me, you guys. I hate exercise. I hate it. I, yeah, I do. I hate it. But I, actually, I should say it this way. I hate going. I hate getting dressed for it. I hate driving there. But I love how I feel when I've done it. I love it. And so do it anyway has helped me get through the front resistance the part that I hate. And it helps me get there. And once I'm there, I absolutely don't necessarily love the exercise, but when I'm done, I love how I feel. And so that's how I use do it anyway, okay? Every day I use do it anyway, because it works so powerfully for me to push my excuses aside and to actually take care of my body, which is a very important thing in terms of my commitment, in terms of my desire to really enjoy my life fully. But I never, ever, ever, I'm never the kind of person that wakes up and goes, yeah, let's go exercise. I'm never the kind of person that is driving there going, I'm so excited to do this. I'm never the kind of person walking in that's even like, yes, I'm so glad I made it. I dread it usually all the way through it. Um, sometimes I half enjoy it while I'm there, but mostly I dread it. But by the time it's over, I frigging love the fact that I went and that's why I do it. My night routine is very simple. Complete the day and leave no tasks that I have to finish in the morning. It's that, that, that's it. And so it's not necessarily that I have a specific order, but there are particular things that I do. Number one, totally set up the kids. 
So that means pack your lunches. It means get the backpacks ready if it's school season and get them by the door. It means if there's any forms that need to be filled out or printed or anything else, if they are printed, they are ready to go. So kids are handled. Second thing, I want the kitchen clean. I don't ever want to wake up in the morning and walk in there and see crap that I have to do. I don't want dishes in the sink. I don't want things on the counter. And so I make sure that the kitchen is clean, that the counters are cleared off, and that there is no, nothing I need to do in the kitchen because it will distract me in the morning. I will feel guilt. I will feel obligated to, to get that done. Um, third thing that I do is I tend to set out the stuff for breakfast. And the reason why I do that is because my kids will wake up at various times. And so if I've got that thing set up, I've just bought myself a couple more minutes of quiet in the morning before the parade of children come running down the stairs, starving and wanting breakfast. Um, the other thing that I do is I go to my computer and I print out the day calendar for the day ahead. And then I take that print out and I take my notebook that has all of my travel and kind of everything that's laid out for the, the business that I run and my speaking schedule and stuff related to the kids and I move it all to the kitchen. Now, why am I doing this? I'm doing this so that when I leave my bedroom in the morning and I walk into the kitchen to have 30 minutes of quiet time for myself, to get focused, to plan my priorities, everything's set. It's all been handled. There's no thinking involved. It's amazing. Then once that's all handled, I turn off all the lights. I lock the front door. When I walk into my bedroom, the very first thing that I do, I set my alarm and then I plug my phone in, in my closet. That is the single most important aspect of my evening routine. I have studied morning routines, journaling methods, the science of productivity. It has taken me three years to figure out the perfect morning routine journaling method. It takes me less than five minutes, less than five minutes. Each prompt in the journaling method is backed by science. It is designed to make your mindset more powerful. It's designed to give you control. It's designed to leverage the world's most powerful research around focus and around happiness. And literally it takes you less than five minutes. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step this week, the science behind each one of the prompts. I invite you to print this out. I invite you to go to the five second journal and look at the science. And I invite you to think about what's working for you so you can create a morning routine that really empowers your mindset. Because I don't want you to wake up in the morning and immediately let the world in. You're under siege all day long from the world, from your friends, from your work, from your emails, from your social media, from the television, from the 24 hour news cycle. Your dreams deserve 10 to 30 minutes in the morning for you to get your head on straight, for you to focus yourself on things that are positive, for you to figure out how to build momentum and make progress on something that matters to you today, and for you to work on building your deliberate way of thinking so that by doing so, you're going to reprogram your default network in your brain so that your mind automatically starts filtering the world in a way that works for you, a way that works for